Welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve tips, tricks, and benchmarking, of which I've got some interesting ones today. As many of you know, my computer was recently stolen, but I was able to pick up an RTX 3080 off the EVGA Insider Store. That was fantastic. I was really thrilled, and I'm going to give you some benchmarks on it. But before that, if you aren't already subscribed, of which I see about 75% of you are not, Hey, stick around. I've got plenty of benchmarks around Resolve and other video editing suites that you can learn from. That said, right after I got the 3080, I won the new egg shuffle and was able to buy an RTX 3090. So bump the 3080 to the kid's gaming machine. Yeah, I know that's insane. And put the 3090 in my workstation. That creates an opportunity for us. That opportunity comes today. We're going to benchmark the 3090 versus the 3080 in the same base system. Let's jump into the benches. The system we're testing in has an AMD 5950X processor. Right now we're going to test it with an RTX 3090. It is 32 gigabytes of 4000 megahertz. Corsair memory. It has NVMe drives top to bottom and you notice I am turning off anything that could help my performance with my timeline proxy mode turning off any rendering cache, and going to let the system do the work straight up. Now I've got the task manager up top with the performance tab highlighted so we can see where the work's getting done. Jumping to my GPU tab, you can now see where the video decode is going to happen when the GPU is using the NVENC engine to decode or encode the footage. This footage you see is a benchmark I've put together starts with a rather simple decode that's done in the GPU. As you notice in the top right hand corner of the footage, it's an NVENC encoded decoded and you see the correlation in the charts. The CPU doesn't have to carry too much, though it does still work. I've got a color grade that'll slide across it that's just a simple LUT. It's a corrective color LUT. Nothing all creative here. Now we start the fun stuff as we move into the CPU rendered. And you'll notice the decode immediately stops out of the GPU on the right. And we're now struggling as we've got a complex grade running. Here we invert the color, and that's fine, it runs okay, until we add noise reduction to it. The noise reduction pretty much stops the playback sharply. It's trying to playback ProRes 422 footage uh, using the CPU at 25 frames a second. You can see the GPU is spiked doing the noise reduction work. And frankly, we never catch up with it there in the monitor. The fusion effects, the simple effects that we're running here, the glitch and the binoculars, run just fine. Unfortunately, the second we jump into the second top-down waterfall view, you're going to notice that I have an optical flow slow motion in place. This optical flow leverages the tensor cores that exist inside the GPU, but not fast enough because it cannot get through that 4K motion estimation that it needs to get through. Now we're working in single core, low GPU CUDA count as we do fusion work. What's disappointing about this is we're in DaVinci Resolve 17 and they've yet to fully accelerate through hardware acceleration and through multi-threading the fusion environment. Now we've seen playback on the RTX 3090. Let's put an RTX 3080 in this exact same machine. Now we fire up the RTX 3080. Fun fact, this is the exact same NVIDIA NVENC encoder that exists in the RTX 3090 we just saw. In fact, this is the exact same NVENC chip that's also in the RTX 2000 series cards like the 2060 and 2080 Ti. Today we're going to see that it behaves the same here as we go through the decoding of the chip. However, we will see a difference in the GPU due to the number of CUDA cores and performance that you get out of the ray tracing cores when we get to the more difficult portions of the benchmark. What's interesting about that, if you don't plan on using some of those studio only features, you can definitely get away with a lower end graphics card. The 3080 chewed through the A7S 3 footage, now the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. As we move into the 422 footage, you can see the CPU is going to pick up the work and keeps up pretty well as it did with the 3090. Here is where we'll start to see a difference. Where the 3090 was able to manage the inversion and the LUT on top of the color there, when we get into noise reduction with the 3080, it spikes up to almost 100% and is really getting zero frames out of our playback. Here with the optical flow slow motion, same story, less ray tracing cores, less tensor cores, and really going to be painful even with the basic fusion glitch and binoculars, the 3090 made it through pretty easily. Here we are burning through the timeline. We're halfway through the optical slow-mo. However, the monitor screen is still stuck back on the primary fusion effects. Now we're still a clip behind with the optical flow and we catch up to the template utilization in the fusion wheel. 
and the flying leaves. Finally, our last scene, the 3D scene that I set up, and it looks like it's rendering this back pretty well. I know a lot of this lives in the CPU with some of the effects being managed out of the GPU. Neither is well optimized or multi-threaded. Thank you for watching. As you can tell, the 3080 probably was more than enough for me, but when I could get my hands on the 3090, I had to jump on it. It has helped me as I've gone through with any compute intensive tasks. And frankly, when I jump into Unreal Engine, I've gotten into modeling there. The VRAM is incredibly important to me. So I really do appreciate the extra power the card gives me, but on a price performance, I think the 3080 would have been the right choice. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.